here we go. All right, hey hacksters. Uh, it is Throwback Thursday, and I'm a little late on this because I went to the dentist and got my face numb, but, okay, so lightning round. Um, at Maker Faire, you might have seen the um, uh, Looking Glass Factory volumetric hologram display. Uh, they go to great pains to explain that it's not like a real hologram, as there's a technical definition of hologram, which we'll get into. And then this is, a, as far as I can tell, it's a complex lenticular display, which is similar to one of those postcards you get with like the, the stripes of plastic in it. And those are actually uh, cylindrical lenses or half cylinder lenses that show different parts of the image to different parts of your eyes. And they've got basically a grid of these. And so instead of just one axis side to side, you've got up and down, but they focus more on the side to side. And anyway, I tried to get a video of it to kind of show you what it looks like. And with the lag, it's gonna be a little, a little difficult, but like, you know, even though the thing is being animated, you can also tell that it changes a bit uh, as you move from side to side. And if you move, just like with the postcards, if you move too far to one side or the other, it's gonna like loop back on itself and you'll kind of see through the magic. But what's the, where's the fun in that? Um, yeah. So Looking Glass Factory is super cool. Uh, the last time that I saw one of their prototypes was last year at Maker Faire New York, I think. I think. And uh, they had basically a much larger product that involved like slabs of uh, plexiglass or something like that uh, that had uh, images embedded in it and they've also got these other ones that like tilt or something but compared to what I saw last year they're already like becoming incredibly cool uh, and much more convincing like they had a little city in there as well that you could sort of um, uh, look at and it would it looked really crazy so holograms like real holograms uh, have traditionally involved lots of chemicals a dark room uh, you know, a really stable environment and things like that. Uh, and there's a, a company that is making it easier for you to make them. Basically the Polaroid... <gasps> oh boy! <laughs> I call it the Polaroid of holograms. One second. It's called Liddy Hollow. You can start googling now. Alright, alright, alright. <laughs> Once I'm done destroying my art... Oh boy. Um... We can have a look at Liddy Hollow. So this is a little kit that, uh, you know, you pay one time for the kit and uh, you can order the glass plates uh, that you embed the hologram in. Uh, you can order refills for that. So this isn't going to show up very well because A, I've got a bunch of different lights on it and holograms really want to have one point source of light. Uh, even though like this one is bright enough that I can really tell. I've made a few different apparatuses uh, to replace the little plastic tower that you get in here. It's like a little laser cut plastic tower, it looks like this. And um, the issue with that is that it wants to have as stable of an environment as possible. So in the past, uh, I made this hollow clock, which is from an old carriage clock. Uh, this is part of where the whole throwback thing comes in. Holography is a technology that really got sort of going in the 60s and there's a bunch of really cool literature about not just the process but the culture around it that you can find. And basically you use a laser to target one side of your glass plate and then depending on where you put your object on one side or the other, uh, you get different types of holograms. So a transmission hologram has your plate here and then the laser shining on your object uh, or a split beam. Oh, this is going to be really hard to explain in like a, a small amount of time, but you can research it and it's really cool. There's also reflection holograms, which are most of what I do. Now, <laughs> uh, you can find the projects on Hackster if you want to learn more about the hollow clock itself, how it's used, how the Liddy Hollow kit works. I've been upgrading it though uh, in a way that I haven't yet documented with a, uh, a trunk, an old uh, steamer trunk basically that has uh, a large dark space so I don't have to like hold a coat over my head and stuff. Uh, and I can really have everything be super solid in there. So instead of having laser cut pieces that kind of slot together, as much as you can use like magnets, heavy things, uh, things that are like really well glued or soldered or whatever together, uh, this is gonna help you immensely uh, if you're trying to make holograms. So the more that you can do that, the better. Now part of the reason that I bring this up is that a while ago uh, I made some holograms of the Sino bit by Naomi Wu and this is super cool. It's like the the first open source hardware uh, certified 
product to come out of China. So it has a number on here, OSHWCN00001. We did an interview with her, actually. Oh, yeah, let me pull that up. Uh, I'll link it under this video. We did an interview with her about it uh, when I was in Shenzhen last year. Super cool. And I've got these holograms made of, that I made of it. Um, and the reason that I want to do this episode right now... Oh, you can kind of see it. A little bit. Uh, the reason I want to do this episode right now is because Make has just published an article on this that you might have also seen. It's in the most recent issue, uh, featuring the Winters on the cover, who are super cool people, um, and the Adafruit Feather, stuff like that. Uh, and on page 50, this is my hologram of the Sinobit. I gotta congratulate Hep Svadia, who is the photographer who took these pictures. It is really hard, really hard to get holograms to show up in a camera, so kudos. Uh, and yeah, so if you're curious, check out the uh, Hackster uh, tutorials. You can check out the project in Make as well. Uh, and I plan to keep updating that with more cool stuff as it arises. I'm going to try one thing real quick before I sign off. I'm going to try to turn off one of these lights and see if that'll help it show up for you. Give me a sec. Okay, maybe this will work because I got kind of one, one ring light pointing over here. And this is the brightest one. Uh, the cool thing about holograms is that you uh, they're they're one-sided or they're two-sided but like um no it's not gonna show up is it oh curses um anyway if you uh if you flip it around so this is the way that i took it right and if you look at it with the light bouncing on it it appears that the sino bit is still sitting directly behind it if you take the hologram and then remove the object it looks like it's still there uh, and this is the ideal subject because I take them with red light and it's a red uh, board so it reflects all the light back. Um, or most of it. And, uh, where was I going? Oh yeah, so uh, it will look like the object is still there behind it, but if you flip the hologram around, it looks like it's projecting back out at you and all the depths are reversed. So the little LEDs that are sticking out of the board will appear that they're going in instead. So holograms, super cool. Uh, almost ancient technology at this point, 70 years old, that's super cool. Um, check out the Make article, check out the uh, Haxer projects, I call it the hollow clock. And I also have a straight up just tutorial about um, the uh, holography process that is here. Um, if you don't, if you can't get your hands on the magazine. It's super cool. Check that out. Thanks for watching. Have an awesome rest of your throwback Thursday, and we will see you tomorrow for Fundum Friday, where we will talk about cool projects that you can crowdfund. Thanks for watching.